Today, Portugal is a thriving European nation with a rich culture, developed economy, and functioning democracy. But it hasn't always been this way. Portugal only became the nation it is today after the Carnation Revolution. On April 25, 1974, a group of Portuguese army officers peacefully ended the fascist Estado Novo regime, which had ruled the country for 48 years. The Carnation Revolution ended a long period of political oppression, transforming Portugal into a liberal democracy with a first world economy. It also brought an end to Portugal's colonial wars in Africa. How did the Estado Novo regime come to power? Portugal was a parliamentary republic until a military dictatorship was established in 1926. With the economy in crisis, the government appointed Dr. Antonio Salazar as finance minister. Six years later, Salazar became prime minister, rewriting the constitution in 1933, banning all political parties except his own, and establishing the Estado Novo, or New State, with himself as its head. He served until his death in 1968, after which he was succeeded by Marcelo Caetano. This building, the Aljube, was a political prison from the start of the dictatorship in 1927 until 1965. Almost every political prisoner detained by the Portuguese secret police, the PID, passed through here. People were arrested at the break of dawn and, and taken to this building with no arrest warrant or court order. In the Aljube, suspects of political crimes were kept in complete isolation in stalls. The PID would interrogate and torture dissidents for confessions, and information about illegal political activity. Means of psychological and physical torture included sleep deprivation for days, beatings, and statue torture. Controlling political dissent was essential for allowing the regime to stay in power. The Portuguese secret police targeted any resistance to the regime. Many communists and socialists were targeted, but also individuals like Humberto Delgado, the opposition candidate in the election of 1958. Delgado lost to ballot stuffing and was assassinated in exile by the secret police in 1965. Political discourse and less than support of the regime was forbidden. 20,000 bufos, informers for the PID, existed in everyday Portuguese society. As my grandmother, who was born and lived in Portugal during the regime, describes in the following video, a climate of fear permeated even the most mundane everyday encounters. Were there things you certain, certain things you didn't talk about in public? Because so, of the regime. I remember when I, before I go to America, I have a little shop called shopping. Some one man come to the shopping, he start talking about the Salazar, bad stuff. I am so scared about that. I don't know what I am doing. That's true. Because I think he's, a, he's, he's belong to the PID. You understand the PD? Police uh, investigation yeah. script. script. This is, I think, he is, because he, he start talk like that if I say something wrong. He, 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 he tell, you know, he get me for the prison. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Because this is yeah. the reason the people don't talk. Portugal, during the Estado Novo, was the poorest, least educated country in Western Europe. In 1970, Portuguese GDP per capita was only 900 US dollars, only a third of the EEC inner six average. 33.6% of adults were illiterate, and at the time of the revolution, 53% of Portuguese homes did not have running water, 36% had no electricity, and 42% had no toilet or sewage. Why was Portugal so poor? Simply put, the government referred it that way. Salazar accepted only $63 million from the US Marshall Plan. This was 18% of what Spain received, and 12% of Holland's share. The government outlawed strikes, making it near impossible for the working class to demand better wages. In the rural parts of the country, feudalism was effectively in place. Land barons rented out land to farmers, taking large shares of what they produced. An impoverished rural populace with little access to education and low literacy rates offered little resistance to the Salazar regime, ensuring its longevity. Central to the regime's identity was a nationalistic desire to retain its historical standing as a global imperial power. Portugal's colonial empire had existed for 500 years, and at the dawn of the 20th century, the remnants of her empire consisted of Angola, Mozambique, Guinea-Bissau, and several islands across the globe. In the 1950s and 60s, when most European nations granted independence to their colonies, Portugal insisted that they were a transcontinental nation. 
In the early 1960s, armed independence fronts were established in the colonies. The PIGC in Guinea, from Low in Mozambique, and the MPLA in Angola. The struggle for African independence would go on for another decade. The regime looked for a military solution to these conflicts and began sending young Portuguese men to war in Africa. Hundreds of thousands of Portuguese were conscripted to fight. Over the course of 13 years, 1.5 million soldiers served out a total population of 4 million men. At its peak, 40% of government spending went to fund the colonial wars. Yet, the Portuguese couldn't defeat the forces fighting for independence, which were liberating more land every day. The colonial wars were an effort by the dictatorship to remain politically relevant, but instead would be the downfall of Estado Novo. As Portugal's colonial wars dragged on, a growing number of mid-ranking military officers became increasingly frustrated with the regime. A clandestine group calling themselves the Movimentos das Forças Armadas, the MFA, was formed. They sought Portuguese withdrawal from Africa, Portuguese democracy, and an end to Estado Novo. At 12.20 a.m. on April 25th, 1974, this song, Grandola Vila Moreno, played on Radio Renascencia. It was a signal to pro-MFA units to seize strategic points of interest across Portugal. By quarter past noon, Marcelo Caetano and most of the ministers of the government were besieged in the National Republican Guard building in Lisbon. Before the sun set, Caetano would surrender, and fascism in Portugal would finally die. The only casualties were five civilians fired upon by the PID. While the disbanding of the Portuguese secret police was immediate, the Portuguese transition to democracy took longer. The MFA's embrace of the three Ds, democracy, decolonization, and development, was paramount. And so, in March of 1975, when the head of the Transitional Council, General Spignola, attempted a right-wing coup, it failed. Portugal would never turn back to dictatorship. After an eight-month stint of radicalism and another failed coup, this time communist, a constitution was written by the MFA, and elections were set for April 1976. It is hard to understate the effect of the revolution and the democratization of Portugal on Portuguese life. As Dr. Farinha of the Algae Museum writes, the life of the Portuguese changed radically from an economic, political, social, and cultural perspective. The revolution democratized education, introduced the National Health Service, and the social safety net that hadn't existed before. Portugal opened itself up to the world and joined the EEC, dramatically changing the level of development in the country. Portugal had been a rural, archaic, poor, and very dependent country, dependent on the colonies and on war itself. The revolution empowered thousands of Portuguese from the middle and lower classes to participate in the workings of government. There had never been such a radical transition in Portugal, which here too had effectively forbidden any type of social mobility. From the start, the MFA wanted a speedy end to the colonial wars, and fighting ceased soon after the news of the coup reached Africa. All Portuguese colonies were granted independence before the end of 1975, and to this day, Portugal has never fought another armed conflict. Today, the future for Portugal is bright. It is a full member of the EU, a thriving democracy with a stable economy and vibrant cultural centers. The transition from authoritarianism to democracy is not always peaceful, but with the Carnation Revolution, the world witnessed radical change without the violence that so often accompanies such transitions. The repressive Estado Novo regime was dismantled through the efforts of the MFA, the long-standing resistance, and the people of Portugal who wanted and deserved a more modern, open, and democratic society.